Okay, welcome back to the Scope Podcast. Uh, we kicked off earlier in the year with the Knights boys. Uh, we're now on to the Bronx boys, and we've got a couple of good-looking humans right now, and uh, they could be flowing on a little bit to my gratefuls. Uh, got a veteran got a veteran Bloat FC member and maybe a potentially up-and-coming Bloat FC member in Jesse Arthurs and <laughs> Alex Glenn. Thanks for coming on, boys. Uh, we're good, both. Appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having us. Uh, like, like I said, I've, I've told you before, people who follow uh, the podcast, I always like to start off with a grateful, something I'm grateful for, all positive energy, all talking about how we can be better or what's good in our lives. Have you got anything for us there, boys? Yeah, you want to kick off? Yeah, bro. Um, personally, I'm just grateful that preseason's over. Um, <laughs> bro was struggling, but it's done and round one around the corner. So, nah, just grateful for that, bro. Yeah, I think a lot of I think I think you're not the only NRL player that will grateful that it's over, bro. Getting around oh, one. Oh, hundred, you know too, bro. Preseason's the hardest part of the season. Season. What about but, you, Lexi? My grateful, my grateful have to be um, getting nominated into the team, Bloat FC. It's a huge, huge honor, bro. Um, you know, and I got the phone call from the boys and um, was pretty speechless when they called me. But um, you know, that's a huge honor. I know it's a. Uh, it's a prestigious team to be a part of, um, so I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of that. They're also grateful to be on the show, baby. Oh, that's, that's cool. awesome, brother. A couple of gratefuls. Like I said, we never cap them here. Uh, it's going to be very similar to my grateful. Uh, this is this. We're doing this today, Friday. The team will be announced officially next week, but we're not going to drop until the Wednesday. But, uh, yeah, my grateful is also being a part of the selection process. You know, a lot of the players like yourself spoke for themselves. So there weren't, there weren't too many hard decisions. But like I said, you know, now that I'm looking at Jesse here, you know, I think he's got a big future on and off the field. Uh, so I'm just grateful to be the masseuse. I'm officially the, the masseuse <laughs> of the of the Bloat FC. So you're going to be seeing a lot of me this year, uh, Sexy. Uh, I'm looking forward yes, to rubbing down mate. those calves. I particularly like the groin area, mate. Action. Yeah, a bit about. of glutes, bit of groins. That's my favourite. Um, and uh, yeah, just hoping you can uh, uh, wear it as least amount as possible when I when I get into it, boys. Just the towel will do. On to yeah. the intro, boys. On to the intro. This is where I do my best work, baby. Shit. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, one of the boys. Volley K did the intro for us. He does Ice's one as well. It's always a little. Oh, oh, I, I just I just did Tom Tom Waterhouse today too before I did you boys, and uh, he's sitting there all, all smick in the suit, and I'm just I'm just looking at him, seeing if he's got a bit of bop. I knew you boys were gonna bop. I know you I know you boys got flavour. Right, as soon as that beat drops, you know you're yeah. initially ooh, just gonna ooh. start bopping. You're just feeling it. <laughs> all right, boys, on to uh, on to the the footy part of this uh, the podcast. Uh, Lexi, congratulations again, not only being uh, named in the Bloat FC, but getting the captaincy again, brother. Um, do you want to quickly tell Thank us, you, you know, what that means for you with such a proud club? I know you've been a, you know, a really good servant to the club over the years. And also the opportunity the Broncos gave back to you with the testimonial on the weekend for the trial game, brother. Yeah, bro, it was, um, it was uh, obviously with the captaincy, man. Um, you know, it was, it was when Kevy come in, I knew I had to earn my, my role again, um, as being the captain and I love that man it's a challenge for myself and I want to prove my worth um, you know I just don't want to be handed any entitlement um, so you know to get the captaincy again for the second year um, I'm stoked because firstly I didn't want to go out with that one year as captain and we got the wooden spoon and went through the year that we did it, it would have haunted me so a bit of redemption this year um, to lead the boys out it's a, it's a huge honour this club obviously means so much to me and um, you look at the past captains that that have um, led this club. Um, you know they're 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 legends in my eyes. So for me to do that, um, it's a huge honour, um, and I'm just excited for you know the challenge again. Definitely looking forward to playing more games this year. Um, and then the testimonial, bro, it was just um, it was obviously something that I knew that was coming. Um, you know when I re-signed with the club, um, you know contract wise. Um, you know, my my salary wasn't, you know, as high as it should have, like I thought it would be because yep. salary cap issues. So um, one way that we're going to make this up um, with money-wise was through this testimonial. So, um, you know, I didn't expect it to be a huge success as it was on the weekend. You know, we got 10,000 people, fans that come through, supported both teams. 
the night was unbelievable, um, you know, and I was just overwhelmed that, you know, the, the I guess the occasion, man, I didn't expect it to be as, as good as it was. And um, yeah, it was, un, it was unreal, man. Um, definitely went over all my expectations. I was just very grateful that this club gave me one because, you know, they don't hand them out very often in the whole competition. And for the Broncos to do that to me, um, you know, it was just a huge honour and I was very overwhelmed, bro. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll get back to that, bro, because I want to touch on the testimonials. Me and Kempi spoke about it. I know they do a really good job in the Super League uh, over there with it and I'd like it to be something that's uh, more regular over here in the NRL. I know it's, Jess, I know it's hard to sometimes speak about a guy when he's sitting right next to you, but, you know, being a young guy in the squad, what does it mean to have a guy like Lexi with that C next to his name for you, brother? Yeah, I reckon, um, you know, when I first came to the Bronx, obviously was, when you come as a young fella, you always, you know, you're looking up to the older boys in the team. Um, so, like, when I first came to Bronx, I actually pulled Lex aside and um, I, asked, I just picked his brains, bro. I just asked him, like, heaps of questions about, you know, his, his career, because obviously he's been in the, in the game for so long. Um, and, you know, he's been at the Bronx his whole career. So I obviously sat him down and, you know, Lex is one of the one of those players that, you know, I'm a young kid from New Zealand as well. So um, for me to come in and be with Lex, he's awesome, because I sort of look up to him in a way. And um, I just like being around people like Lex, man. He's genuine. Um, I call him the OG, bro. He's like the OG of the club now. <laughs> yeah, so. bro. That's mad respect. Uh, hey, the guys that you love, OG, uncle, all that stuff, bro, that shows a lot of respect oh, from the young guys, man. And a lot of the boys can, like, relate to that as well. I mean, like, obviously, Rex is from New Zealand as well, Geordie. Um, but there, there's a lot of young young boys in this squad, bro. And I think to have Lexi as a leader in this team's, um, you know, something that we should all be grateful for. And My guy. Oh, we're sneaking My another guy. little grateful there, brother. Sneaking. Oh, hey, 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 gone, hey, gone. gone. <laughs> Young. But yeah, that's nah, good, bro. He's, he's awesome. Bro, I'll give Jesse credit there, man. Like, I was, um, when he pulled me up at the camp, when was it last year? You would have loved that, bro, eh? When a young guy comes bro, up and asks that. 100%. You know, like, as a rookie, when they come and they're like, man, if you don't mind, like, I'd love to have a chat about you, or to you, about some things that I guess you want to see me or you want to see from me, and also what's some advice that you could give me. And bro, I was I was like gobsmacked, eh? For like a young buck to come in, ask these questions. I was like, bro, that's that's unreal from him. Um, I guess as young kids, you you want them to be a sponge, bro. You want them to soak the, everything up. And he come through and he was asking, um, you know, advice about, you know, if I was his age and I knew everything I knew now, what was something that I'd change, you know? And yeah. I just thought that was pretty oh, powerful from him, question. bro. He's got a good head on him. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Not bad. Said, Look, it, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard trying to gas up your skipper while he's sitting right next to you, hey, bro. So I know that was a tough question, but you, you handled it really well, bro. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to you playing this season. Speaking of playing this season, you had a little bit of a mishap, you, ankle injury, or on the weekend, or you're right, bro. How's how's yeah, that pulled up? Uh, it's grade three carry on. Oh, was, was it? Because I, I seen you on. Uh, I think it was Geordie's Instagram too, hobbling with the boot. It's all good. We're all good. <laughs> They put me in a boot straight away, so I was a bit worried. But um, yeah. now nah, this game pulled up sweet, bro. So I've just been doing a bit of rehab running and stuff like that. But um, you know, hopefully, bro, I should be sweet for selection. So we'll just see how how it pans out. They said it was ankle, but I think it was just bruised bone, eh, on the toe. Oh, oh no. <laughs> nah, it's all good. <laughs> but Lexi, quickly, we'll go back to the testimonial. Not only your testimony that you had on the weekend. Do you think it's a good idea, bro? Because man, being over in the Super League and and the and the best thing about it too is, bro, like the way you feel about the ten thousand people that turned up. That's how the fans feel about you. There's just a real good vibe around it. And like you said, when it comes to these days, it's just a natural thing. It happens with the salary cap. Older players, they. You know, then when it comes down to negotiation time, you know, generally it's the older players that have to take the pay cuts because they're they're looking for the future and all those sorts of things. So I think it's a really good way to bring um, more revenue back in for some of those some of those older guys like yourself. And I think almost, you know, me and Kempi said potentially even just maybe one a team, one a team that you know you get a testimonial every year, go to the trials, take it out to a venue where they don't get too much footy, bro. I, I don't see really any negative to it at all. Not at all, bro. I'm I'm all behind it, eh? I think, um, you know, after seeing it, this was the first, obviously, the tes first testimonial I've ever gone to. And just the hype around it, the whole week, the build up to it, um, you know, it was just unreal. And I think it's one amazing way where you could pay back players for being loyal. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Like, 
Footy's a business thing, so like players getting signed at other clubs, so be it. But I think this is a great incentive to, um, you know, for the clubs to repay their players for loyalty. And um, it's hard to come by these days. And, um, you know, I think it, it'd be awesome to see more players be loyal. But at the same time, I understand the, the business side of thing and you got to look after your family. Um, you got priorities and all that stuff, but um, yeah, bro, it was it was awesome. And I know, like you said, bro, the UK have been doing it for a long time, um, and they they always get a great reception over there. So it would be great to see more in the NRL for sure. Yeah, for sure, bro. Uh, and congratulations on the on the turnout and uh, and even on, on your career th- this far so far, brother. I know you got plenty more to come. Um, last yeah. year, boys, can't beat around the bush. It was, it was definitely a tough season for you. I'll start off with you, Jess. Being a young guy, you played, you know, at the Titans the year before and got a few games. You sort of come into the situation there. It was a tough season. What can you take from that, bro? And, and you know, how are the ways individually and as a team you're looking to improve this year? Yeah, but I think obviously everyone knows, like, our team was really uh, young last year. So I think um, we just sort of need to, um, like I said, we need to pick the brains of the older boys. Um, and we all sort of just need to buy into, you know, obviously Kevy's at the club now. So with what Kevy's um, put forward for us. So I think, um, you know, we've had a really good preseason um, and, and building towards the season. So I don't know, but I think like me personally, um, you know, it was kind of hard to um, put a finger on it. Like I was sort of in and out and I was injured um, for most of the year, but I, I sort of like, we started the season well, bro. And then it sort of just went downhill from there. Um, and then obviously I got injured and um, I didn't really get a few more games until like the end of the year. So it was a bit of a rocky season for myself, obviously the club as well. Um, but like I said, bro, I think just coming together, bro, we all had a good break. And I think that the preseason's put us in, in a good spot um, heading into round one. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see how, how we go round one and go from there, bro. And what about you, Lexi? You've been around for a minute now, like we said. How is that, Was that what easily your toughest season to date? Oh, in, by in a mile, bro. By a mile, both physically and mentally. Um, you know, the bubble was hard as in mm. itself. Yeah, uh, and when you're when you're not winning footy games, it makes it even harder, bro. Life outside of, of football, you can't relax, you're always stressing. Um, to add to that, bro, I was I was injured for majority of the season as well. I think I only played five or six games. So it was definitely challenging. Um for my first year as captain, you know, I didn't really get to lead the boys the way that I wanted to, but um, the way that I've seen it, bro, it, it's definitely given us a lot of resilience, mental resilience against um, all odds. Um, you know, we we had one physio trying to look after, at one stage, it was our whole starting pack. Yeah. You know, and um, the pressure was under him. Um, you know, there was a lot of, lot of um, bad things going our way with footy, outside of footy. And yeah, bro, when you live in Brisbane too, you know that, the media attention always is always on you. It's one so, of those um, clubs. You can't afford to it, slip it up. Is, we, you, if it you're is. Parramatta, if uh, you're the Roosters and you're the Broncos pretty much, they're probably the three biggest clubs where what, when it rains, it storms, eh, bro? Like, we, oh, with those bro, she storms, brother. Yeah. So when it, like, we were, we were turning it. I think the hardest thing for us was, you know, hearing that um, comments about us not caring. Mm. I think that was the thing that hurt us the most because – We'll turn up every single day, um, you know, train as hard as we could in preparation for the game, and then we'll go into the game and still not get the points, you know, the two points. And it was so frustrating. And then you had to come face the media every single day at the club. And, um, yeah, the the mental resilience that we've got from it, I know we're going to be better for it this year. And then um, having, you know, Kevy and Andrew Crow, and, you know, we got the best staff in the business I believe at this club now, so you know we're we're setting up for a good year. And uh, Jess, Kevy, I think one of the first things he said when he got on board was he he's looking to bring the old boys, getting all the old boys back and in, involved in the club. You know, you said you've asked for yeah. advice off Lexi. What about some of the any of those other older guys that have been around that you've been able to lean on? Um, I haven't not really at the moment, but I mean he's brought a few of the old boys back. Um, you know, he's had had them come in and talk to us in a few meetings and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know, bro. I'd probably like to pull aside like someone like Petro. I mean, yep. obviously different positions, but I feel like Petro's he's had a massive influence in the game, bro. Not just for the game, but also for like his his Fijian community and stuff like that. So I think someone like Petro, bro, his knowledge of the game and also just away from footy as well, bro. Like he seems like he's you know really switched on with his life away from footy. So 
He's, he's the not, nicest bloke. He's dude. one of the he's one of the better humans, eh, bro? Not even oh, footy players. He's one of the better humans on the planet, man. Big oh, pet. But I think like that's what I mean, bro. Like with Kevy coming, he's bringing back all the old boys, and you know, someone like me, bro. I love learning things from the older boys. Like it's just knowledge is just there for you. You know what I mean? You just got to go ask. So yeah. I mean, you know, even even Darbs is still around, bro. He's still around here. So just pull Darbs aside. Um, we got Benny Teo as well in the team. Like. Yep. I think Benny's like he's done a lot, bro. His career speaks for itself. So he's a giggle too, you know, eh, Benny? Yeah, bro. He's the man. <laughs> yeah, oh, gee. Um, hopefully, I just you know I'll just pull them aside when when I feel like the time's right, and then just see what they reckon, bro. And just pick their brains a bit. And and uh, talking about obviously you, you said you're hopeful for round one and also you know the selection process got a lot of youth in the back line, but you got a lot of youth in the team altogether. I think you were the, the youngest team on average last year. Uh, how's the comp? Is the competition bringing right. out the best in you too for, you know, some of the young guns you've got coming through? Yeah, we've got a really young backline, bro. So I think um, all the boys are, you know, really fighting hard for spots. And um, it, it's just good, bro, to go, going out every day and, like, competing with the boys, knowing that there's spots up for grabs. But I, I think that, like, people might look at it as a weakness, bro, but I think it's really good because, obviously, like you said, it brings the best out of you. Like, all the young boys knowing that there's positions up for grabs. So yep. everyone sort of knows, bro, like, you know, um, you got to perform to your best each week. Like nothing's like locked in. So, bro, the best I, I thing it's good, bro. The yeah. best thing is there's always a bit of banter out there yeah, too. Bro. Yeah, can playing offside touch in that, bro. Yeah, bro. You bro. Throw out some banter. Oi, honestly, man, man I did, bro. I didn't realize how important that was. When I come through a Parramatta, we went through some tough years as well, Lex, and then I went to Manly. Whenever we did, like, edge work against each other, and I've talked about this before on the podcast, bro, like, the Stewart brothers, the way they used to fight each, like, be arguing with each other and want to get it yeah. over each other, bro, like, it was crazy. And it was that next level competition, man, that brings out the, like, then you, you end up getting into games. And I'm getting into games after doing fucking captain's run going, this is kiddies, bro. Like, <laughs> well, we've, been going, we've, been, we've been going harder against each other in training. Like, that's honestly how I feel, man. So... Like, like the, the, someone just put one shot on, bro, and then the whole team just like... Yeah, gun, gun. Love yeah. that energy. And is that... Is, yeah, that, is like that the, someone, someone like me the other day when I stepped this fella. Yeah. <laughs> and then you stop me and you're like, oh, are you sweet? And then yeah. you carry on going. It's, hey. um, bro, that, that little banter is like what makes footy fun, man. Yeah. And the good thing with our club, we're going to have like... um you know it's going to be edges against edges yeah so defensive edges so every week you're going to see who's going to be the best defensive edge and then that you know the next the next week you'll get the prize for that so it'll be left versus right and then you got the middle with the fullback so it'll be good bro and Perfect. it's like opposite of shout like the prize or whatever it is. So it'll just be good, bro. Just competitive. Yeah, that's a good thing, Lexi, because you're going to have the same sort of competition. You know, you've got some young guys coming through there as well. Um, our boy Pretty Ricky. Yo. Our boy Pretty Ricky Pretty is part of the, the Bloat FC. A um, couple <laughs> of young guys, right. Carrigan and that, they've been around. <laughs> hey, what'd you say about Jordy? <laughs> nah, Jordy Ricky's got him covered, eh? Oh! <laughs> oh. Gee, I'll beat Lexi today. Uh, well, is he putting on uh, Uncle? The Young Bucks, bro. The Young Bucks. Yeah, you we'll love the energy, that way. You love the energy, bro. But it, it, as a skipper, obviously all that competition, you want that all throughout the year. But, you know, this year in particular, I think it's important that, you know, probably for yourself and, and the, the forwards that you want that cemented by about week four and that though. Week four or five, you want your best team playing out and, and making sure you're staying consistent. Because like you said, so many injuries last year, bro. You just want to be making sure you can get your best 17 out there, eh? For sure, brother. For sure. And everyone knows, you know, it's going to take a couple of games to get – Used to, you know, combinations and obviously the speed of the game. Um, we all found out firsthand last week in the trial how fast it is, man. And, you know, when the ball goes out to touch, she's no more scrums. You bring it in and it's quick play the ball. So it's going to take a while to get used to that. But you're exactly right, bro. The, the quicker we start understanding who's going to be our main 17 um, and we start building those combinations and we'll start getting more consistency football and, um, you know, that's when that's when we'll start playing our best. But it will take a few rounds to get used to it. But I feel like, you know, this is the best. I was talking to our trainers earlier in the gym. This is the best that I feel our team has gone into round one. Yeah. Um, you know, I might be, you know, sugarcoating a lot of it, but that's honestly how I feel. Personally, this is the best my body's felt going into round one, not carrying any niggles. And, you know, just the vibe, the energy in the gym that we had this afternoon, this was our last training session before, you know, we kick off round one next week and everyone was just hyped, man. The energy mm. was through the roof. So I'm, I'm pumped for round one next week.
No, you can hear it in your voices, boys. I'm excited to, to see you get around. I've, I've got one final question, but before that, see, doing this platform as well, I get people coming on and every now and again, because I've got a little bit more popular than actually when I played. <laughs> like no, one, no one really cared when I played, bro. Like, but people end up coming, like, message me now, like, Scope, can make a comeback. I'm like, nah, bro. <laughs> nah, bro, not these new rules, man. I, I said I struggled back in the old rules, let alone playing in these new ones, so there's no chance. Um, one little funny question we like to... Oh, I'm going to finish with all the teams throughout the year. It's a bit of a giggle. I don't know if you've seen it on 10 in the can. It's, uh, if, uh, it's a dating question. With this, have you seen it? I copied it from the NFL. If you had, oh, if you had one God. player in your team who you would definitely not let date your sister, who would that be? You both have a, get to pick one person each. So who would, you, who would you least like to date your sister in the team? Take her out on a date. If you had a sister, this is just a hypothetical, obviously. Okay. On a date or like be in a relationship? On a date, on a date, yeah. Cool. I end up looking further into it because we picked the YKTR crew and I, di I didn't pick Lukey because I'm thinking long term. I'm not going to let my sister date anyone, you know what I mean? And, yo, you know, yo. he doesn't get after it enough for me. So I need someone nice and fit in that as well. But for you boys, who would it be? Straight out the gate, bro. I'm not letting Ricky date myself. Bro. It's heartbreaking, bro. Yeah. I know how it thinks and I know how it works, and it's not happening. Well, you know it best too because you live with him, correct? All right. So, you, so you've seen him do some of his best work, eh? Hey? Yeah. Um, Lexi, who, who wouldn't who, who wouldn't who wouldn't you let date? I'd have to say Jermaine Osako. Yeah. <laughs> why, why Jermaine? <laughs> <laughs> He's a good dude, bro, but man, like the, the man's too handsome. He's Ooh, too handsome. Yeah. I, I don't want all the girls. You know, I don't want them to date my you know, my sister. Yep. Knowing that potentially worrying you know, all the time. Yep. Yep. hundred percent. All right. So I have to say him. All right. And on the flip side, boys, if there was one guy you're sitting right next to your skipper too, Jess, be careful. If there's one guy you would like to date your sister, who would it be? Do we even have sisters too, by the way? Do you have sisters? Yeah, I got a sister. Yeah. Three boys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, so, Jess, you want to go first? Oh, no, you go first this time, Lexi. He just went first last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess mine's a, mine's an easy one, bro. It'd be Anthony Milford. He's cashed up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I know she's going to be filled. Yeah. You know, filled after well. So yeah, the you know, milf. Milford. Yeah, the milf. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jess? <laughs> You're off the boys. You don't want any of them dating your sister. Oh, I don't know, but um, I don't know. What would I say, bro? There's got to be a couple of good guys up there, surely. And you actually you can't say Lexi. Don't say Lexi because it's easy. Maybe someone low key, bro. Like, yeah, maybe someone like Meaty, bro. Low yeah, Meaty, bro, digger, bro. He's he's gonna be a lawyer soon, so yep. Maybe do. What are you thinking funny. long term? You're both thinking long term, eh? I like it. I like it. Sister, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Really? It's not like media digs, bro. Good dudes. Yeah. Uh, good answers, yeah, boys. I, yeah, Millie's quiet, bro. So I know, you know he's, he's he's low maintenance. Yeah. He's got full of cash. Yeah. She's in safe hands. Yeah, <laughs> gross. I uh, I appreciate you answering as honest as possible, boys, especially with the giggle questions in particular. Uh, thanks for coming on, boys, and good luck for the season, eh? Always Thank a bro. pleasure, brother. Thanks appreciate for having you, us. Cheers, boys. Thank you, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>